Hey guys, wanted to make a video to talk about what we just saw in the combat live letter covering Black Mage. First, let's cover the job action trailer video itself. The first thing we can notice is that there's a new HUD element below the astral fire gauge, as well as space for three polyglot stacks. He starts off by casting Blizzard 3, and then the new version of Thunder. It's interesting that this is not a hard cast of Thunder. In the benchmark trailer, you could clearly see it being hard casted. This remains to be seen if maybe he has a proc already, or if Thunder is always an instant cast now. He follows up with Amplifier, giving one stack of Polyglot. Then he starts getting into a standard rotation. He uses Blizzard 4 to get three Umbral Hearts, transitions to Fire with Fire 3, and uses Ley Lines. And then he starts using Fire 4s, and each Fire 4 is giving a stack of this new gauge. Let's call it Fire Arrows for now. He uses Ethereal Manipulation to go to an ally to dodge an AoE, and then uses the new reactivation of Ley Lines to respawn it under his current location. Then he uses Astral Fire Paradox, and it's important to note that this appears to be an instant cast. Then finishes his fire phase with three more fire fours, the arrow gauge finally fills up, and the character starts glowing. Then he uses despair to finish his fire phase, he should be at zero mana at this point, uses this super nuke ability that consumes the fire arrow gauge. And then he uses mana font, and take a good look at the job gauge. It looks like Mana Font now also resets the Astral Fire Timer back to 15 seconds, grants 3 Umbral Hearts, as well as grants a Paradox Marker. To me, this can only mean that Mana Font will most likely be a full MP Restore ability in Dawn Trail, letting you do another entire Fire Phase. He then finishes off by showing some AoE, so he uses 1 Polyglot as, uh, for Xenoglossy, then uses Triple Cast, 2 Flares, and then the new Super Nuke ability. The interesting here to note is that Flare gives you three charges of the Fire Arrow Gauge, letting you get max stacks with just two Flares. Next, I wanted to cover what was shown in the slides after the job action showcase, and then we'll get into more detail into some of the changes. Alright, so the first change to all casters, not just Black Mage, is that the Swift Cast roll action is actually going to have a cooldown reduction that's applied when you're above level 90 at some point in the level 90 to 100 range. Swift Catch is going to be reduced to a 40 second cooldown. So this won't be applicable to older content like level 90, 80, and 70 ultimates. It essentially will just increase the movement options for Black Mage as you have higher uptime on Swift Cast now. They are also extending Adol's duration to 15 seconds. This is similar to how they are extending the durations for Faint and Reprisal. This one is a little neat and gives you a bit more freedom in where to use Adol, where it's convenient in your rotation. It can also allow you to catch two or more raid wides more easily with one cast. For Black Mage specifically, probably one of the most important things to note that they announced in the live letter is that MP regeneration in Umbral Ice is no longer tied to time spent in the phase, but rather casting ice spells in Umbral Ice. This effectively means that what we currently call non-standard will probably not exist in its current form in Dawn Trail. More on this in a bit. First, let's talk about this new job gauge. This new fire arrow gauge fills up by one slot every time you cast a fire four and three slots every time you use flare. What we don't currently know is whether or not other fire spells fill up the gauge. We already know paradox doesn't do it, but also paradox is technically not a fire spell, it's unaspected. For example, does despair grant any charges? Unfortunately, when Despair was used in the job action showcase, he was already capped on the gauge, so we wouldn't see if there's any impact. We also don't know if High Fire 2, Fire Starter Proc, Fire 1, etc. give charges as well. It's probable that any fire spell cast in fire grants a charge, but it's too soon to say without knowing any information from the media tour. Once the gauge is filled, you can spend it on this super nuke ability. It looks to be hard casted and does not refresh the Astral Fire timer. It also appears to cleave, so it will be useful in both AoE and single target scenarios. It also should not consume any mana since it was used after a despair which should have taken you to 0 MP. Also, can everyone agree that this ability just looks insanely cool? It'll be very interesting to see if Fire 1 or Despair fill up this gauge at all. I know it definitely does happen that people who are still practicing the job end up having to cast an extra fire 1 and lose a fire 4 for sake of keeping Enochian up. 
What if this restricts them from capping their arrow gauge and they are just down a huge ability to use? I'm definitely interested in where this goes and I hope that the Mediator gives us some answers. As well, if Despair gives at least two charges of the fire arrow gauge, which is not unreasonable since Flare gives three, then we could probably use the new nuke ability in our opener as well as in raid buffs. It'll also be interesting to see if you screw up your fire phase and maybe have to emergency transpose or cast blizzard 3 early to exit, do you lose the progress that you've made towards the new capstone ability or does it carry into your next fire phase? Unfortunately, we won't find out until the media tour if someone does test this interaction. Next we've got the ley lines reactivation. It's exactly what it sounds like. You can reactivate ley lines once to have it spawn under you again. Now, Yoshi P did clarify this later in the broadcast, this is a one-time usage per lane lines to reposition it. We'll have to see if the fights in Dawn Trail make use of the skill, or if the skill is just going to end up being some kind of oh shit button to press if something went really wrong with your ley lines placement. And maybe it's something you just never use in a fight like between the lines, which you don't use in every fight. Next let's talk about Astral Fire Paradox. As shown in the job action trailer, Astral Fire Paradox appears to be instant cast. Now, there are a few things we have to note here. Before they used Astral Fire Paradox in the showcase, they also did the Ley Lines repositioning move and Ethereal Manipulation. It's possible, but in my opinion, not probable, that one of those abilities gives a temporary charge of Swift Cast, kind of like Ethereal Manipulation does in PvP. But I think it's just more likely that they've, they've changed Astral Fire Paradox to just be instant and fire all the time. So that's what I'll be assuming here, but maybe I'll be proven wrong when the media tour actually happens and we get tooltip information. A lot of people seem to be liking this change, but in my opinion, it's not that great. One of the things you could do on Black Mage at level 90 is either front load or back load your fire rotation. For example, take a look at these two versions of the standard rotation. Since you have time to use 4 GCDs on either side of the Paradox, you could use two of them on Fire 4s, maybe one as a Xeno for movement, and another as a Thunder proc for a Dot Refresh. Then you would use Paradox, and then four Fire 4s in Despair, and then you're done. The issue with this is that if Astral Fire Paradox is an instant cast, you are not able to even do this line anymore unless you have high spell speed. You will drop Enochian before you finish the Despair cast. This is because instant casted paradox would refresh your astral fire timer at the beginning of the cast rather than the end of the cast. So when you start casting your fire 4 after the instant paradox, your gauge would already be somewhere between 13 and 12 seconds, compared to today where your gauge would basically be at 14 to 15 seconds. So it basically seems like it's a lot harder to backload your astral fire phase, especially if you're on a slow crit set. We'll have to see how this will interact with things like keeping up your dot and using Xeno in your fire phase to prevent polyglot overcaps since I think it's likely that you will end up in hairy situations sometimes where you would need to do something like this and you just wouldn't be able to unless you were in ley lines or had high spell speed. Yes, instant paradox adds some movement but it also heavily restricts the order in which you can do things in your astral fire phase and removes some of the flexibility that black mage had with the order it casts its spells in its usual rotation. So overall, I'm not a huge fan of this change, but we'll see if any of the other changes we see in the Meteor Tour change my opinion on this. Next, let's talk about Mana Font. One pretty interesting change that they did for Mana Font this expansion is that it looks like it grants three Umbral Hearts and a Paradox Marker and refreshes the timer of your Astral Fire phase. Now, we don't know exactly how much mana is restored without the official tooltips, but I find it very hard to believe that this isn't a full 10,000 MP mana restore, given that they give you hearts and a paradox marker. This also means that mana font will probably get restricted to only be able to be used in Astral Fire, which I'm okay with. There technically was some extremely fringe stuff with some people using mana font in ice phase, but that was so uncommon that it's not even important to think about. Mana font will also transform our opener quite a bit with this new functionality, since rather than using mana font followed by a fire 4 in despair, you'll potentially be transitioning into another full fire phase. It's likely that your opening tincture won't have any ice spells in it at all. Now, Mana Font did have some issues in Endwalker with being pretty easy to drift and even in some cases lose a usage. 
I'm curious if they will do anything for this in the media tour, like reducing the cooldown slightly to, say, 110 seconds, kind of like Red Mage's Manification, or maybe they will let you pre-pop mana font for an XCOG-like effect on your mana. The other fun thing about mana font giving hearts and flare filling three flame arrows on the gauge is that there is a world where you could have AoE and dungeons be flare, flare, super nuke, mana font, flare, flare, super nuke. Kind of insane AoE potential now that I think of it. Add in a super ether and now you could use five flares in a row if the mobs are even alive at that point. At least mana font will feel like a very impactful button now, whereas an Endwalker and Shadowbringers it honestly wasn't that strong of a 2 minute cooldown. Alright, so we got to talk about the MP tick thing and how they've changed the way that Black Mage recovers mana. This is a pretty big change that they saved for the slideshow. The mana regeneration that Black Mages get is no longer tied to a 3 second server tick interval, rather it is now tied to landing ice spells while Umbral Ice is active. Now I'm assuming Umbral Soul will also generate mana for downtime, otherwise that would be a pretty funny oversight on their part. Anyways, I think this change is pretty divisive. Personally, I didn't think that the 3 second interval for getting mana was a huge issue if you were playing Black Mage completely standard. In most situations, using Blizzard 3, Blizzard 4, and Paradox, that was sufficient time to get 2 mana ticks. The only exceptions were usually when you were in a super high spell speed set and you were under ley lines, or you were just extremely unlucky. And even then, you had things like Thunder and Xenoglossy that you would probably use in your ice phase anyways, which would be more than enough to get to max mana. This basically means that the Endwalker style where you would, for example, Despair, Xenoglossy, Transpose into Umbral Ice, Paradox, Xeno, use Thunder proc, Transpose into Astral Fire, use a Fire proc, and then do 3 Fire 4s and a Despair, would theoretically not work anymore based on what we're reading, since it's unlikely that Paradox counts as an Ice spell for purposes of generating mana. Also, due to the number of GCDs cast in an Ice phase, this wouldn't even need a Mana Tick plugin anyways, which some people have complained about. Now what I wish that they did is that if you cast any spell in Umbral Ice, you got mana. This would allow non-standard Black Mage to still exist in some form, and it would still allow for some creative skill expression. It would even be completely accessible to all players, console or PC, should they want to try and explore that route. There's no mana tick plugins or add-ons that would even be required for something like that, since the mana amount you'd get per GCD would be constant. I'm not sure why they didn't do it this way, besides just wanting to eliminate the non-standard gameplay type of style. Non-standard gameplay allowed for a lot of movement options, especially in movement-heavy sections of fights like Phase 1 of Top during Pantocrator, as well as Phase 4 and Phase 6 of Top. I'm pretty confident that Black Mage is going to feel worse in these fights in 7.0, and may even perform worse as a result of this change unless they tie MP regeneration to any GCD in ice. What I'm interested in understanding is, first of all, how much mana do the skills in Umbral Ice give? Does using Blizzard 3 from Astral Fire count as using an ice spell for purposes of mana regeneration? Maybe they count Blizzard 4 and Paradox as the two ice spells that get you mana, maybe it's 5,000 each. Do you get different amounts of mana depending if you're in Umbral Ice 1, 2, or 3? And can you still regenerate mana from Lucid Dreaming when you wear an Ice Phase? Now I'm confident that the Black Mage chefs around the world will still be able to cook up something fancy with whatever Square Enix decides to provide us. I know I will be deep in the theory crafting rabbit hole alongside many others once Media Tour information gets out. Unfortunately, it's hard to try and theory craft what non-standard might look like, if it even exists at all without knowing some of the intricacies of MP regeneration and how much mana different skills give. Needless to say, I'll include a lot of details in this when we go over the Mediator information in June. Also, given that they phrase this as landing ice spells grant you mana, I think this basically confirms that they have to add Umbral Soul at an earlier level. Imagine doing the level 70 ultimates Uwu and Yukob and you can't even generate mana in the downtime phases because you can't hit anything. So I think it's pretty likely that we're going to get an Umbral Soul level change. Next, let's talk about something that they showed at the beginning of the job action trailer. Three polyglot stacks and the upgraded thunder. We were kind of expecting this one, but having a third polyglot stack allows for more banking of Xenoglossies. 
it's now technically possible, if the buff timings align for it, that you could put 5 Xenoglossies into raid buffs with 3 already stocked up, 1 about to pop, and an extra one from Amplifier. I'm interested to see what kind of stuff people pull off in terms of rotation optimization and maximizing buff contribution. Now, the upgraded Thunder was known since the benchmark, but the interesting thing here is that it looks like it's just instant cast straight up from the job action showcased. Whether that means there was already a proc available, or maybe Thunder is always a proc now, remains to be seen. So I'm definitely curious what is happening with sharp cast and procs in general. So what would the single target and AoE rotation be like in Dawn Trail? The basic single target rotation seems like it's going to be identical to Endwalker, with the exception of the new fire ability you can use after your 6 fire fours that you'd slot after Despair. Since Astral Fire Paradox is presumably instant cast, you'd have to be pretty careful with how you order your spells and place Thunders and Xenoglossies in your fire phase. I'm assuming that the AoE rotation will remain similar to the existing one, as it seems unlikely that they'd introduce High Fire 2 and the Enhanced Flare mechanic and then promptly get rid of it in the next expansion. So the AoE rotation is likely still High Blizzard 2 into Freeze, into 3 High Fire 2s, 2 Flares, and then the new Fire spell. In terms of openers, there's not enough information to say. If Despair gives 2 or more of the Flame Arrow gauge and Manifont truly is a 10k MP full restore, then you could potentially see an opener like this with a full fire phase after your mana font, but we'll have to see if that's how it truly works. In any case, there are a lot of unknowns still and I don't want to make any sort of rash judgments on if Black Mage will still feel fun to play for me. I personally can't wait till the Mediator information drops so we can do some more theory crafting. Stay tuned to the channel, feel free to like and subscribe if you're interested in seeing more Black Mage content. Thanks for watching.